Hello, 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 my brothers and sisters. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? This is a late dinner tonight. We have a late dinner tonight, so come on in, come on in. I hope that you have a little room for some soul food this evening, my brothers and sisters. I'm not going to keep you long tonight, but there's an issue that we need to discuss at the dinner table right now, so we can go ahead and try to resolve and help one another out. We're going to give a, a few more people an opportunity to come around family and sit down at the table. Invite some of your friends. How you doing, Sister uh, Grimes? How you doing? Come on in, brothers. Come on, sister, so we can get to it. I'm going to give a few more people an opportunity to come in so we can jump on this uh, topic this evening. It's very, very important, my brother and sister. If you have anything to say along the broadcast, by all means, go ahead. We family here, okay? Go ahead and make your comments so we can address it. And it's family time. And I'm here, family, okay? A few more seconds and we are going to jump into tonight's content. How you doing, Sister Deborah Scott? How you doing, Sister Flo? How you doing? How you doing? It's late dinner. Come on in, come on in, come on in. All right, if this is your first time looking at this broadcast, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tony M. Toomer, and I talk about relationships. I talk about relationships, my brothers and sisters, uh, in regards to a man and a woman that should be serious, that should move to the commitment, and after the commitment, it should move to the covenant part of relationship. That's what I talk about when relationship from a biblical standpoint. When I say biblical, God created the man Adam first. And after he created Adam, he created Eve and he reproduced. I mean, not reproduced, but he represented the uh, woman to Adam. How you doing, Sister Robinson? And when he, he brought the woman to uh, Adam, Adam said, in regard to Eve, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, I should call her woman because she came from man. And that's the position that I come from. If you don't believe in the relationship of a man and a woman and you have an alternative lifestyle, I still invite you to still sit here at the dinner table and still get some of this soul food. And I really, and I, I don't have nothing to say, but you have a free will. But if you're going to listen to what I got to say on tonight's menu is the relationship between a man and a woman. With that said, we're about to get into tonight's content. And tonight's topic is God doesn't want you to be in a relationship with anyone that will not make time for you. How about that? How about that family? How you doing sister Tom? How you like that uh, family? God does not want you to be in a relationship with anyone that will not make time for you. Now, my brothers and sisters, I got a question at the dinner table. We're, we're all family here. My question to some of you, brothers and sisters, this primary, you single brothers and sisters, and also some married couples, uh, the question is, how long do you think you're going to live, first of all? My question to you, my brothers and sisters, how long are you planning on living? I know that might sound like a stupid question, but it's really not stupid. It should be thought uh, provoking. Why did I say? Why do I say it should be thought provoking? When it comes to your time, my brother and sister, really, brothers and sisters, how time fly by so quick. You really don't have that much time here on earth. So if you really do do not have that much time here on earth. You have to take advantage of the opportunity that God gives you to live, okay? Now, as far as a relationship goes, let me uh, read this to you. We're going to go to Psalms, and it's, uh, it's chapter 9 and 10. Again, it's Psalms 9 and 10. And again, it's Psalms 90 and the verse 10. Listen to me very carefully, my brother and sister. And God is speaking. God is speaking when he talk about our life, okay? Now, the days of our life, my brother and sister, is 70 years. 
and by any reason or the strength, they are 80 years, yet they are boast in our labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut out and it fly away. Or to say it differently, my brother and sister, we have uh, a life expectancy of three scores and 10. What is three scores and 10? What is a score? A score represents 20 years. So my brother and sister, we have a life expectancy of 70 years, according to the Bible. Now, we know some people die before that time and some people live beyond it. Don't go by that stuff what you, the, the United States statistics say or no world, no other country. The Bible say the basic life expectancy of a man and or a woman is 70 years. That's the average life expectancy. So my brother and sister, if we have an average of 70 years to live, and we know as we get older, time be going by quickly. I know when we was young, you know, we be we want to get to a certain age, but when we get older, the course of a week go by very, very quickly. So why am I telling you this, my brother and sister? Because when it comes to a relationship, my brother and sister, it is imperative and it's important that you do not waste your time with on anyone that doesn't want to invest time with you. Your time, my brother and sister, is very, very important. You cannot get it back. One second ago, what I what I just was talking about, a few minutes, well, a few minutes ago when I started talking, I cannot get that time back. You're looking at me right now, and it's 9.39 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today's day is 416 of 2022. We will never live that time or this day anymore. It's going to be history. So why am I saying that? My, my thing to you, my brother and sister. Hey, how you doing, Sister Sherry Smith? Why are you, brother, and why are you, sister, align another man or another woman to not want to invest time in you? Are you dating someone that doesn't make time for you, my brother and sister? Think about it. You don't have to raise your hand. Are you dating someone that doesn't reach out to you? Are you dating someone that doesn't spend uh, time with you? Or when you reach out to that person, that person does not reach out to you in a reasonable time. Another question. You don't have to raise your hand. But there, uh, Sister Flo said, oh, the red sitting on the dock of the bay. That's right, wasting time. There was a song a few years ago, my brother and sister. It was called, Are You Lonely Tonight? And that was recorded by Elvis Presley. Some of you all probably have heard that before. But my question to some of you, brother and sister, are you lonely tonight? I didn't say, are you alone? I said, are you lonely tonight? You see, there's a difference between being alone and lonely. You see, when you are lonely, when you are alone, you still know that you got God presence, okay? Because when uh, God had a relationship with Adam, he said that it's not good for man to be alone. He didn't say it's not good for man to be lonely because God knew he had a relationship with Adam and Adam had a relationship with him. So Adam was alone. He was not lonely. You see, when you get to the point of being lonely, you can get to the point where you could uh, feel depressed, isolated, and you're not feeling loved, okay? You understand it, my brother? You understand it, my sister? It's a difference between being alone and lonely. Now, there are some of you brothers and there are some of you sisters, as I speak right now, you are not only alone, you're you feeling lonely. There's a man, sister, that you want him to invest time to you because you have a whole lot of love and you have a whole lot of time if that guy just does right. 
brother, there's a woman out there that you want to invest your love and your time in if she just do right. But as we know, my brothers, and as we know, my sister, you got to come to the point, my brother and sister, where your time is valuable. And I had said it before, my brother and sister, and I'm going to say it again. When you are in a relationship, it's all, it, you you feel kind of like pumped pumped up. You know what I mean? You feel kind of pumped up. You're feeling good. You're feeling excited and stuff like that. And you think that the relationship that you're about to embark on is going to be hot. You think that it's going to be real good and everything, but something happened. Something happened to the person that you really want to invest your time in. That person, for some reason, is not giving you what you need in a relationship. What do I mean by he or she not giving you? He or she is not giving you time. He or she is not giving you time. My brother and sister, I know it's hard. I know it's hard because I have walked that road before. You got to get in your mind, brother and sister. You got to get in your heart. You cannot make a man or woman be with you. You cannot make them be with you. That man and that woman have what is called a free will. That man and woman has to decide whether or not he or she going to invest time in you. Now, listen to this, and I have said this before, my brother and sister, and I'm not the author of what I'm about to say. Anybody that wants to spend time with you, he or she has what is called a uh, priority. He or she will prioritize you. You are in a priority section in that man's or woman life. And you and you could see it. If you want to invest time in someone, my brother and sister, but and you willing to do it, that person has to be willing to do it. One of the biggest lies, my brother and sister, one of the biggest lies you can hear is when a man or woman tell you what? I'm busy. No, let's take that back. I'm busy, present. I was busy. My brother and sister, listen to me carefully. No man and no woman is that busy. No man or no woman is not that busy where he or she cannot make time for you. Do you understand it, my brother? Do you understand my sister? Stop allowing a man or woman to tell you I was busy. Even the president of the United States make time to do what he wants to do. He have, he have things in priority. Every man, if you ain't no president, sister, or brother, you know yourself, you make time for what is important to you, right, brother? Sister, you make time for what is important to you, right? You do. Let's talk about a few things, my brother and sister. Those of you that are coming in uh, to tonight's uh, dinner table, the topic is uh, God doesn't want you to be in a relationship with anyone that will not make time for you. Let's t let's, let me uh, read the scripture to you, my brother and sister. Let me read the scripture to you. As it is written in James 4, 8, James 4, 8, James 4, 8, it said, come close to God. Listen to this. It said, come close to God and he will come close to you. You see that? It said, come close to God and he will come close to you. You see, God is willing to make time for us, but we have a responsibility too. You understand? We have a responsibility too on a spiritual sense. How you doing, Sister Annette? Now, when it comes to a man and a woman, if a man tells a woman, if you, I, you know, basically, if you come close to me, I will come close to you. If a man let a woman knows that he wants to spend time with her, it's up to her to do it. If a woman want a man to spend time with her, 
is up to that man to do it. So you all see it from a spiritual set, set, uh, setting. And then also in Jeremiah 29, 12, Jeremiah 29, 12, Jeremiah 29, 12 said, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You see how God is. God said, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Some of you brothers and sisters, listen to this. And that's from a spiritual standpoint. You see how God is making himself available to a man and a woman. You see how God is willing, but God is willing, but it's up to the man and woman to do it. Now, when it comes to a relationship between a man, we talk about relationship. It's a relationship with God and man and woman. Then it's a relationship between a man and a woman. If a man let a woman know I will be here for you and he says, see, I want to listen to you and she don't want to make time for it, that's a problem. Also, in, in Isaiah 65, 24, Isaiah 65, 24, Isaiah 65, 24, it said, before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. That means that God is letting you know Whenever you're ready to communicate with me, I'm here. I'm ready. I want a relationship with you. Don't you know, my brother and sister, that God want our, he want us to put, you know, spend time on him. It's a lot of us that don't even have God at the top tier of our relation or our priority. God is way down at the bottom. Now, some of you know, if God is way down at the bottom of the token pole for most people, now, you know how God feel when you, brother, are interested in a woman and she got you low on the totem pole. And also, uh, sister, you know how it is if a man wants you, uh, got you low on the totem pole. Remember what, this thing what I started out saying tonight. I said, one of the biggest lies that a man and woman could tell you is I was busy. That's one of the biggest lies. Remember that, my brother and sister, one of the biggest lies. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about a few things. After I was busy, you call a man, sister, or brother, you call a woman. It's 24 hours in a day. You call that man and you call that woman and they do not respond to you in a reasonable time. Now, let's go to the spiritual side. You ever notice when a man or woman call on God, he make himself available? And God running the universe. Now, some people say, well, I'm not God. God could do that, but you see, God want us to be just like him. God running the universe, but God make time for us individually. You understand that? God make, he running the universe, but yet he make time. If you, if you call on God, he respond. Now, let's bring it to the relationship between a man and woman. Brother or sister, you are interested in someone. You call that man or woman. That man and woman call. As you know, my brother and sister, most of us have a cell phone close by, right? We have a cell phone close by us. And if a man or a woman be around you, brother or sister, if they had a cell phone you see how quick they re react to their cell phones, right? I have talked about this before. If a man and woman is around you and that cell phone is very close, right? You notice when someone call, that person that person will pick up, even if it's vibrating, they will pick up that phone and look at it. You ever notice that? And sometimes they will answer that phone right there in your presence. Is that not true? Now, you see how quick they respond to the phone calls? What about when it's you? What about when it's you? You call and he or she doesn't respond to you in a, in a reasonable period of time like he or she respond to everyone else. And then, then they'll ask you this stupid question. Did you call me? They seen your number. You didn't have to leave no voicemail because they seen your number, but they will call you in a day or so probably, and say, did you call me? It does not take 24 hours, brother and sister, to call you. 
It doesn't. Listen to me. It doesn't take that long to respond to you. Even if a man and woman is on a job, they got those cell phone close to them. They have what are called breaks. Every job get that man and woman a break or that man and woman going to go to the bathroom. It doesn't take that long to respond to a call. Yo call. Let's go to a text. Have you all ever noticed this? If you're interested in a man and a woman. And by the way, they can respond to a text quicker than a call. If a man and woman. Yeah, that's right, Sherry. Did you call me? That was, that's so crazy what some people ask. Don't go for it, my brother. Here go another one. You text a man, sister, or brother, you text a woman. You text them, and they get back with you hours and hours, or, or maybe another day or days. What does that tell you? What does that tell you about that person? You're not high on that person's priority list. It doesn't take that long to respond even to a text. And here go a big one. Here go a big one, my brother and sister. You want to make plans with that man or woman, right? You make plans with that man and a woman. And when you make plans with that man and woman, let's say this brother, you ask a lady out. You ask a lady out and she don't respond to you. She don't say nothing, but she talk about stuff. But you ask her for time because you know what you're doing. You trying to spend time with her. Sister, the same thing. You you asking this guy, I want to spend time with you. What are you doing at a, on a certain day at a certain time? And he and she don't respond to you. You could be talking to that person face to face, or you could be talking to that person on the phone, or you could be, you could be texting them. You, brother, you showing interest in this woman. You trying to spend time with her. Sister, you trying to spend time with this man. But he or she will not commit to you. What does that tell you, my brother and sister? If you ask a man or woman, if you tell them, I want to spend time with you, and they don't just say yes or no, they play in the middle. Those type of people do not ever invest time in them. Don't take them, don't never take them serious. I'm telling you, my brother and sister, especially you single people, if you want to get with a man and a woman and he or she does not answer the question when you want to get together, don't ask them, don't ask them why or what, or, don't ask them all of that. And you all know I'm big on this thing. What, am I, what, what is your brother Tony big on? Plan B. You all know I always say plan B. Brother and sister, if you ask some brother, if you ask a woman, what do you, I want to spend time with you at a certain time, and she doesn't respond, go to plan B. Go to plan B. Sister, if a man does not, I'm talking to you, single brother, sister. Sister, if a man doesn't want to spend time with you, if he doesn't answer your question about getting together, go to plan B. Remember I said earlier, what did I say earlier? Let's go back to uh, Psalms 9 and 10. Psalms 9 and 10, it say this, the days of our life are 70 years and by any reason, the strength, they are 80 years, yet, yet they are boasting only labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away. What does that mean again? God telling us, we got to, um, again, God telling us that we got a projected lifespan of 70 years. And that's projected time. That's not actual time. That's projected time. Because we do know that men and women die before they get 70. But the average age, according to the Bible, is 70 years. And by reason, if God give you strength, you can make it to 80. And we know some people live beyond 80. And we are impressed by that. But the main thing at the end part of this scripture is say, for it is soon cut out and we fly away. They're telling you life is short. So brother or sister, why are you investing time in someone that will not make time for you? Why would you do it, brothers? Why would you do it, sister?
Come on, let's talk. Why would you invest time in a man or a woman that will not respond to you? More, most of the time, when a man or woman don't respond to you, brother and sister, and shoot you off, a lot of time, he or she is running after somebody else. You're not the top priority. Why? You got to ask yourself why. Some of you brothers, some of you sisters, you want to be in a relationship right now. You craving to be in a relationship right now. You are either lonely or alone. If you are alone, you still have God. When you get to when you get to lonely, you are in a stage where you can start getting depressed. That's why some people take, have to take medication because of depression. Don't you know, my brother and sister, a lot of people, while they take that, a lot of times men and women, they are alone. They are, I mean, they're not alone. They're lonely. They're lonely. When a lot of people, sometimes they have to take the depression medication, they are lonely. They have this sense of hopelessness or dread. God, brother, and God, sister, did not create us to be alone. You understand? He did not create us to be alone. Brother, if you try to make time for a woman, you've been trying and trying and trying. Brother, if if she really wanted to, brother, she would make time for you. If she wanted to, she would make time for you. Sister, if you really want to spend time with that man, he will make time for you. They, some men and some women, they have time for everything. Girl, have you, my brother, have you, my sister, with wanting to spend time with someone, and they and they tell you some thing that they've been doing, and you wondering, okay, he or she can make time to do that, but what what about my time? They want to give you the scrap time, only the scrap time they want to give you. And then what happened? This, my brother, sister. Some of those same people that you wanted to spend time with, brother, you want to spend time with a woman, right? And she would not, she did not want to put that much time into you, right? So let me tell you, you go on and be with another woman and get married. That woman that you were trying to spend time with and stuff, she will make it seem like you, you the bad guy. Some of you sisters, you want to spend time with this man. He don't want to spend time with you. But if you get in a relationship with a man, sister, and you go ahead and get married, that man going to get angry at you because he going to say you the problem. That's how wacko some men and some women are. They think, you see, most of the time, and another thing to my brother and sister, when a man or woman does not want to spend time with you and you let it be known, these type of people, they are narcissists. They are narcissists, and you know what a narcissist type of individual is. These type of people are really about me, myself, and I. When you listen to them, they talk about me, myself, and I. That's what a lot of them do, me, myself, and I. They want you to stay there with, until they get ready for you. They want to do all this other stuff, my brothers and sisters, but they want you to be on hold. My brother and sister, why would you put your life on hold for a man or woman? Why would you do that? Why? He or she, they showing you. And you know what? You getting hurt. You, you getting hurt because you trying and you trying to make it right. You trying. You know, brother, that you are a good man. Sister, you know that you are a good woman, but these type of individual, they just don't make no effort. I'm going to tell you that my brother and sister, a lot of times when you try to spend time with someone and they don't make no effort, 
These people are really not that interested in you. That's just the bottom line. They are not interested in you, sister and brothers. They got something else going on that's more important than you. That's right, Sister Flo and Sister Cynthia. Okay, Sister Cynthia just come in. Sister Cynthia, the, the night at the dinner table, we're talking about God doesn't want you to be in a relationship with anyone that will not make time for you. And this is just a little thing with what I'm talking about tonight, uh, Sister. I said one thing, Sister, this is just a recap. I said if a man and a woman tell you that I was busy when you're trying to get in contact with them, and when you finally get in contact with them, if they say I was busy, that's one of the biggest lies men and women tell you. And they want you to accept that lie. I was busy. That's a lie. Because they can make time to, they can make time, they can move you up on a priority list. If you call someone and they don't respond, they don't call you within a reasonable period of time, we know that people have to work. We know all of that. But if a person does not call you, yeah, or sleep, that's another thing. That's right. Those are games. They would say, I will sleep. That's a lie. They wake up when it's somebody that they want to talk to. Because guess what? When a man and woman know to go to sleep, they have those cell phones right close to that bed. And they have it where they can hear it. Most people have it where they can hear it. That's right, Sister Cindy. People make time for who and what they want. And again, yeah, the phone. Yeah, you all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what that's what it is. The phone was acting up. That's a lie. My my phone died. All those lies. They are lies, and they want you to buy it. They want you to sign off on it. And again, like I said, when it comes to the text, you all remember what I said to the text? It don't take that long to respond to a text. Because guess what? Those cell phones still be buying. It be close by. It don't take that long to respond to a text. A few, a few seconds, you can abbreviate stuff, but they don't do it. How do you, brother, how do you feel, brother? How do you feel, sister, if you take somebody, yesterday was Friday, and you take somebody on Friday, but they don't respond to you until Saturday, today. What does that tell you? You did it Friday, and they respond to you Saturday. What does that tell you? Call or text. What does that tell you? Don't waste your time on it. As far as being serious with them, never get serious with these type of people. If you want to, if you want to see them every now and then, you single brother and sister, you could do that. But don't never be serious with them. Never, 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 never. Because if you do, you send yourself up, my brother and sister. You just send yourself, brother and sister. Invest your time with someone that wants to be with you. That's right, Sister Therese. They don't care about you. Invest your time with someone that really wants to be with you, brothers and sisters. I'm going to tell you all this. And this is a fact. Listen to this. I'm not putting my wife up on no pedestal. You all know I talk about it, right? I'm not putting her up on no pedestal. But listen to this. If Cinderella be at work, if Cinderella be at work and I call, because she's a beautician. She might be doing ahead. If I call her, she is going to respond within an hour. It may be shorter than an hour because I understand she's working. She responds just like that. If I text her, she responds just like that. If she call me, I know to answer the phone just like that. Even when I have to work, if my wife called me, I know that she's high on the priority list. You understand? I understand because it's God, then, then you have your spouse. You understand? It's God, then your spouse. So if she calls me, I respond very quickly. 
whether she called or text. Before we got married, before we got married, listen to this, my brother, sister, before we got married, if I reached out to Cinderella and I say, do you want to do you want to do something? You know what she said? When? Or if I said, do you have a plan? Then before we got married, I said, do you have a plan? And she might say, uh, I had a plan, but what's up? Then before we got married. And then I tell her. And you know what she did a lot of times? This just show you priority. Listen to me carefully, my brother. So this show you priority when a person is really into you. If she had plans with some of her girlfriends, I did not tell her to change her plans. You understand? I did not tell my wife to change plans when we were dating. I didn't tell her that. I just say, hey, what you doing on Friday night? And she might say, well, me and some of my, me and some of my girlfriend, we're going to get out, right? And then she said, what's up? And then I said, well, you know, I was calling to see if you didn't have a plan for Friday, I was going to I was gonna ask you, do you want to do this? You know what she did? She always, not one time, not one time did she say, well, I made plans with my girlfriends, so I can't do nothing. You know what she did? She rescheduled with them. She rescheduled with her girlfriends. That showed me a lot. She rescheduled with them. You know what she was showing me? She was showing me how high on her priority list I was. And the same thing, if she would, if she would reach out to me, and if I had plans to do something, I would with some guys. If I had some plans with some guys, I I asked her what's up, and she'll tell me. Then you know what I do? I get with those guy. I tell those guys, look, hey, we got to get together some other time. We got to get together some other time. They said, why? And I said, well, Cinderella and I, we're going to do something. And they left it like, and they left like that. They said, cool, man, we'll get together some other time. You see, when you have friends and stuff like that, they understand, they understand priority. I'm telling you, brother and sister, when you reach out to someone and you try to establish a relationship with them, I'm trying to drive this home to a lot of you brothers and lots of, I'm trying to drive, drive it home. Please listen. Please listen. You don't have to be lonely. I understand you want to be alone sometimes, but you don't have to be lonely. Why are you being in a depressed state waiting for a man's sister or a woman, brother. So to, uh, your left said, some friend don't understand that by saying you him. You know what, Sister Douglas? I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. There are some, let me tell you some brothers. If you got some guy friends, if you got some guy friends and you tell them, look, um, we're going to have to get together some other time. Because uh, in my case, Cinderella and I, before we got married now, Cinderella and I, we're going to do something else. They understood, but there are some men, and it's not me, it's some men that experience other guys saying, oh, man, she just got you, you she got you handpicked. She got you cat whoop. You all know what I'm talking about, cat whoop. If a man, if any of my guy friends during the time when I was, uh, single day Cinderella. If any of my friends would have said some crap like that, I'm henpecked or I'm cat whoop. You know what I would have said? It's just fortunate they didn't say it because they know how I roll. I would say, you know what? You right, I am. You right, I am. Because you know what? Let, listen to me careful, my brother and sister, when it comes to your friends and even some of your family members. When God bring the right person into your life, when God bring the right person in your life, guess what? If I get, if, you know what? Right now, if I, I'm mad, right? If I get sick, if I get sick and my butt need to be clean, if, if somebody, if I can't, if I can't clean my own butt, 
None of my male friends are not going to come over to where I live at and clean my butt for me. Cinderella would clean my butt for me. She might not like it, but she would clean my butt for me. If I happen to go to jail, which I'm not planning on doing that, if I happen to go to jail, listen to what I say, my brother. Says, if I happen to go to jail, none of my guy friends are going to put no money on the books for me. Cinderella will. Depend on how long I stay, but Cinderella would do it if I went to jail. She would come visit me. None of my guy friends ain't finna come visit me in no, no jail. They'll wait till I get out. They may say stuff like, uh, if you need, oh, this is another thing too, my brother. So this is another thing. When you can tell you about your family, your friends and your family. Check this out. When you need something, 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 you go to your friend, your quote unquote friends. If you in need, majority of your friends going to come up with an excuse why they will not, they can't help you. I'm telling you, my brother and sister, your, some, of your, some of your friend that you think your friends and some of your family member, you go to them, you in a bind and you say, I need, I need your help. They'll come up with all kinds of excuses why they can't help you. Then they'll say stuff like, if, you know, one, if you're in a situation, then they might say something like, call me if you need something. They don't want you to call them. Don't ever believe that crap, brother, sister, call when you got a need. When you got a need, they supposed to meet your need. You don't send nobody off and say, call me when you Call me if you need me. If they see that you got a need. That's why you have to be the right man and a woman. Because the right man and a the woman, they will step up and help you with your need. Even if they have to take a setback. That's why, brother, said you have to be with the right man or woman. Because in Ecclesiastes, it basically say two are better than one. Two people are better than one, my brothers and sisters. And you got to be with that right person. You understand? You got to be with that right person. Your friends that say they're your friend, uh-uh. Some of your, your relatives, uh-uh. I know you, I know a lot of you brothers and sisters, you got hope in your family and friends, right? But the person that, the Bible even say that there's a friend that stick it closer than a brother. If you have a mate, my brothers, if you have a mate, my sister, that person should be close to you. Who is your best friend, brother? Who is your best friend, sister? If you're in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship, my brother and sister, brother, after God, your best friend should be your spouse, your wife, sister. Who is your best friend? After God, it's supposed to be your husband, your spouse. Brother, no man or no woman should come out of your mouth after you marry and say, this is my best friend. Brother, if you got a man that's your friend, you shouldn't be telling, you shouldn't be going to tell nobody, he's my best friend. And sister, if you're married, you shouldn't be telling other people you got a close relationship with a woman, this is my best friend. Those relationships break off when you say, I do. It's about priority and that person making time for you. Who gonna be there for you? I know when I was I know when I was uh out there dating my brother and sister. Let me tell you this. When I was out there dating, listen to what I'm saying. When I was out there dating, there were some senioritas that 
they want they thought I was gonna run after them, right? They thought I was gonna run after them. I wasn't looking for no woman to run after me. I wasn't gonna run and and, I, and vice versa. If I call the woman, let me tell you, some of you brothers, you listen to this from your brother Tony Spearing. If I talk to a woman and I ask her what you doing at a certain so such and so, if she were vague with me, I didn't beg no one. There's not one woman that could say I begged her to be with me. And I'm not putting myself in no pedestal, but I never begged the woman to be with me. If I offer the invitation to let's let's get, get together on a certain date or whatever, I didn't beg no woman to make time for me. She either going to make time for me or not. Because you know what? If she didn't make time for me, guess what? You all know what I'm about to say. Plan B. Plan B. It's going to always be some. I knew that it was uh, going to be somebody that would make time for me. So there's not one woman that I sweated to be with me. Because there were too many. I'm not trying to be cocky or nothing like that, my brother and sister. I, and some of you brothers, if you're single, don't run after no woman. Don't keep begging no woman to give you time. Don't beg no woman to give you time. Sister, the same thing for you. Don't beg no man to give you time. Don't beg them. Sister, there's some other men out there that are interested in you. That's right, Sister Flo. Have a plan B. Especially if you're single, but with the plan B, you need to have. And I'm not talking about. Uh, uh, let me put this straight. I'm not talking about using nobody, my brother and sister. I'm not talking about that. But if you're single, you're single. Single means single. Unless you engage or married, single means single. If you ain't married, you single. That even if you're a widow, you single. There's no such thing. It's only one or two things, sister, brother. You either single or you married. Widow fall up on a single. If you're a widow, you fall, that fall up on a single category. What does single mean? It means that you're not married. What does married mean? It means that you're not single. Married means you are hooked up with someone. Single mean you're not hooked up. I'm going to tell you this, my brother and sister. If you are single, you are not bound to no other man or woman. If you're single, you're not bound to them. The world wants to say that you are bound to somebody because you're single, because you say we go together. That's my boyfriend. That's my girlfriend. Come on, grow up, my brother and sister. When you get grown, you don't go around talking about my boyfriend or no girlfriend. You don't be doing no stuff like that. You don't be going around and say, that's my man or that's my woman. How is that your man? Are you married to him? How can you say that's my woman? Are you married to her? She a free agent. He's a free agent. You get, people of the world get it twisted. You're only bound when you are serious or committed and move to a covenant relationship. And you all know I say that all over again. Sister Yolanda said, I can't stand that I'm your girlfriend. Come on, that's right. That's right. All that, that's a whole bunch of crap. Tonight, before we get up from the dinner table, my brother and sister, always, God Let's talk about God in this again. Do you, brother, think God want you to have idle time with a human woman? Sister, do you think God wants you to have idle time for a human man? Do you really think God wants you playing with your time? That's right, Yolanda. We are too old for boyfriend and girlfriend. Thank you. Come on, brother, sister. God do not want you to be with someone that's going to waste your time. You get older, brother. 
Every second go by, you're getting older. And you still hoping and praying and wishing that this woman was going to see the light. Sister, you're getting older. And you hoping that this man uh, see the light. I'm gonna get I'm gonna give you this point, my brother and sister. Listen to this. Once you pull yourself away from these people that don't want to invest time with you, let me tell you what they'll do. They're gonna start wondering why you're not calling them no more. That's what they're gonna because see they got accustomed to you calling. They got accustomed to you texting. Oh, by the way, my brother, so let me let me say something on this. Brother, if you're doing all the calling and she never call you, put that in your mind. Put that in your mind. You do all the calling, but she never call you. That's a woman that you don't never get serious with. Brother, you're doing all the texting and she never texts you. Now, if you call her brother, she might answer the phone. She ain't did nothing. She ain't did nothing because you're doing all the calling. Locking in your mind, brother, she's not the one. If you're doing all the texting, brother, and she might respond to your text, but she never initiated a text, lock in your mind, she's not the one. If you reach out to her to try to do something, brother, and she don't answer you, or she tell you I'm busy, and she don't say nothing, she don't have no clarity, lock in your mind, she's not the one. Sister, if you call, if you do all the calling to a man and he never call you, lock it in your mind. He's not the one. Sister, if you're doing all the texting and he reply to your text and he never initiate a text, lock it in your mind. He's not the one. Sister, if you reach out to him and say, let's get together and do something and he say, I'm busy or he don't answer your question, lock it in your mind. He's not the one. These type of individuals, brother and sister, I'm telling you what they're going to do. When you go on with your life, because guess what, brother? Guess what, brother? God got the right woman out there for you. Sister, God got the right man out there for you. When God bring the right Roma to you, brother, you're going to look back and say, I wasted all of my time trying to reach out to that other woman. I, I right, wasted all my time trying to reach out to that other woman. You're going to see all that wasted time. And brother, the woman that you were wasting time with, she going in circles. She ain't going nowhere. She just don't know, brother. She could have been the one. She could have been the one. Now, she's going to have a problem with the woman that you say I do to. She's going to want to know why you married that woman. Why you, didn't, why you didn't marry me. What's the difference between her and me? She made time for me. She answered my call. She called me. I text her. She text me back. She initiated a text. I asked her out. She didn't play no games with me. She let me know right then whether she was going to do something or not. She, re, she rearranged her plan to be with me. And she called the girls later. That's the difference between you and her. She made an effort. She put me high on her priority list. Therefore, that's why I went that direction. And the same thing, sister, when a man come to you, if he ain't spending time with you, if you were doing all the calling and texting and making the plans and stuff, and he kept flaking and stuff like that, when God bring the right man to you, sister, you're going to look back and you say, why did I spend all my time on that clown? He had me in a circus. I didn't know I was in a circus, but he had me in a circus. I ran out the pot. I ran out of popcorn. That's when I discovered I was in the circuit. And he was doing the same tricks. Then, sister, when you get with when God calls this right man to find you, and you say, I'm serious, he say I'm serious. You say I'm committed, he say I'm committed. Then you say I do. And then that clown from the circuit's gonna reach out to you. 
And when that clown from the circuit reach out to you, he gonna want you to come back to the circus. But you ain't you don't wanna go on the circuit no more. You tired of you tired of watching him feed the elephant peanuts. Tell him to go feed the elephant peanuts. He gonna try to make it seem like you the problem. He going to say, you the problem, sister, because God brought a man to find you because he wanted to waste your time. You know what he was doing? More than likely, he was dealing with another woman or women. And he thought that you would always be there. But you showed him, then your sister. Brother, you showed her, then you. They thought the narcissists, men and women, think that the world goes around them. And they bubble get busted when you go on with your life. Brother, and sister, when you, when God bring the right man or woman in your life and these people from your past trying to make you feel guilty for going on with your life, never feel guilty. They had an opportunity. They forfeit their opportunity. Don't let them, fit, don't let them uh, try to uh, say that you, you were the problem. You were the problem. Then what they're going to do, they're going to try to gaslight you. And all you have to do, brother, is to say, okay, I take responsibility. I take responsibility for my part. Now, what? Now you take responsibility for your part. Narcissist will never take responsibility for what he did or he didn't do. A narcissist woman is not going to take responsibility for what she did or what she didn't do. I'm telling you. How you doing, Sister uh, Angela? Narcissists and men and women will not take responsibilities, my brothers and sisters. And guess what? Narcissists and men and women, when you go on with your life, let me tell you, they secretly want your relationship to fail. I'm telling you, they secretly watching for your relationship to fail because they want you to crawl back to them. And they'll do the same thing. Over and over again. Tonight, when someone say, I will be is to remember what I say. That's right. That's right, Sister Cynthia. It's always somebody in your fault. That's what those narcissists do. They try to gaslight you and put it on you. So play that, go ahead and play that mental game. Go ahead and say, okay, I take responsibility. And see what they take responsibility. They're not, they're not gonna do it. I guarantee you they're not gonna say, I had a part in it. I should have, I should have been more, I should have made more time for you. I should have called sometimes. I should have text sometimes. I should have made plans sometimes. I should have put more effort in it. Narcissus is not going to say that, that, you, uh, that they should have put more effort in it. A narcissist man or woman, they're not going to do it. They're going to say you should have put more effort in. You know when these narcissist men and women say you should have been more forthcoming and stuff. What they're actually telling you, they wanted you to run after them. Most narcissist men and women, men, women aren't the only uh, one that won't men to run after them. There are some men that want women to run after them too. They want you to run after them. And most of the narcissist people, my brother and sister, they don't have a pot to urinate in. They don't. They don't have a pot to urinate in. And when you look at their life, when you look at their life, when you just look at the narcissist's life, they can't sustain a relationship. If you're dealing with a narcissist woman, she's going to always say men always treated her bad. Every man that she was dealing with always treated her bad. What's the common denominator? She is the common denominator. You will hear some men say, women ain't no good. None of them are good. They always want to use you. What's the common denomination? Nominating. He. Narcissist. God doesn't want you to be in a relationship with anyone that will not make time for you. Guess what? Remember what I said earlier? God running the universe, right? God running the universe. But guess what God do? 
The God allowed the world to, uh, he run the world, but get what God do. God make time for you, brothers. God make time for you, sisters. Sister Lana said, I did then and took responsibility knowing that it was my fault. Staying too long dealing with a narcissist sign or there. I'm not the top. Amen, sister. Got a ring and time when he had time. Oh, yes. I understand. Brother and sister, God make time for us, right? And if we made in the image and glory of God, God want us to pattern our life after Jesus, right? You all notice this about Jesus. Remember when Jesus was on earth? There's nowhere, when Jesus was in a human body, there's nowhere in the scripture where Jesus told somebody, I, I'm, I'm busy. Jesus. Jesus never told nobody, I was busy. You know what Jesus did? Jesus made time. Even if Jesus was tired, he made time for a person that needed him. Jesus was sociable. No man or no woman were created to be alone. You were created to have a relationship with God and you were relate have, you was uh, created to have a relationship with your counterpart. If you're a man, you was created to have a relationship with a woman and sister, you were created for the man. God said, not good for man to be alone. Therefore, he made a woman. So any man that say, no, if a man telling other men don't deal with women, these guys, they got it wrong. They've been hurt. They've been, they've been doing foolish stuff. They be trying to buy women with money. Some of these guys that butt hurt, that telling other guys don't deal with women, they're butt hurt because they didn't do it God's way. And then you got some women they thought that they could get a man by having sex with them. And they found out that sex could not keep these men. You can't lead with sex, sisters. Brother, you can't lead with money or resources. A person got to accept you for who you are, not what you have. I hope that you all enjoyed the dinner tonight, because I did. I did, I did. I love you, brothers. I love you, sisters. Go ahead and wipe your mouth off. I hope I gave you some good food tonight, and I hope you could digest it, because it was good food. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Guess what, brother and sister? The most important relationship that you should have is with God through his son, Jesus. Before you have a relationship with a woman, brother, get your relationship with God through his son, Jesus, first. So before you get a relationship with a man, make sure your relationship with God through Jesus is on point. Before you get a relationship with a man or a woman, make sure your relationship with Jesus stands because that is what I call a real relationship. Brother and sister, peace out and I love you.